It all began with metal scrap trading in 1995. Soon after, Emirates Techno Casting was established to manufacture specialized valves for the oil and gas industry. By 2007, we became a self-contained integrated technology center. The community center was built to focus on the welfare of our employees. ETC was later ranked as one of the top three foundries in the world. Accelerating infrastructure development through automation and robotics, KEF Infra was one of the largest integrated off-site manufacturing facilities in the world. Fast forwarded the construction of hospitals and schools to transform millions of lives. Today, we are celebrating the success of a noble Indian, of a noble family, the success of open-mindedness, of speed, of imagination, of excellence in execution. Performance leads to recognition. Recognition leads to respect. And respect leads to power. In India, we'll see many great entrepreneurs. But what's important is when young people give back to society. When young people contribute to the society, that is what a great Indian is all about. People make money, but people must put back money into the society, and that to my mind is the greatest quality which this young couple has. So ladies and gentlemen, kindly give them a big hand. Kev Holdings is guided by the Faisal and Shabana Foundation to make a difference. Interventions in education, healthcare, arts and culture, women and youth empowerment, and regenerative sustainable development have empowered communities to positively build sustainable futures. Matra a quaternary healthcare facility bringing unparalleled clinical care and patient experience in India at global standards. KEF Healthcare has redefined healthcare delivery from evidence-based clinical care to cutting-edge technologies and modular designs with Maitra Hospital. Welcome to a new way of thinking to a new approach to well-being, happiness, and health. To a combination that can't be found anywhere else. One where mind, body, and soul work in harmony with place. Hospital and hotel. Resort and spa. Retreat and rehabilitation. Experiences and treatments ideas and possibilities unique meaningful and memorable welcome to a new harmony between how you feel and where you are and welcome to a new philosophy clinical wellness welcome to Tula
actually transform my thinking process. Then after that, I said I want to go and explore the world to US. So I went to US in 1989, uh, and that is where I saw the big change. Correct? And uh, first time uh, taking two bags and going to Chicago. And after the post graduation and working there, uh, I was that was my most unhappiest three and a half years in my life. You know, studying and working in US because I didn't find any soul there. You know, I was very very unhappy. And I said I want to come back to India and also challenge the West. You know, for me, always being inspiration was to challenge the West. Why there's no one company or uh, nothing from India to the world? If you really look at it, that inspired me to come back uh, to India and do something. And I said I need to develop things which is no one has done it in the world. You know, otherwise nobody's going to notice uh, us. You know, because we are considered as a poor country. I came and worked with my dad uh, for two and a half years. Uh, I said, nothing is going to work here. It was very challenging to have this uh, industries in Kerala. And I see him struggling. And I went to UAE for a holiday at that time with my wife. I had a one-year-old child. And I called him and uh, said, I'm not coming back. You know, I said, uh, I'm going to stay here. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know? And I, he was very upset with me. You know, irresponsible, married, one-year-old child. Uh, what are you trying to prove? Uh, I said, I don't know. You know, so many times uh, when you are a young entrepreneur or you wanted to be a young entrepreneur, we may not know the answer, what you wanted to do. But with all the education I had, I said, anything you wanted to do, first find out the resources. You know, what is that place uh, is going to give you? Uh, and that is where I decided only thing in the Middle East is oil and gas, nothing else, you know, and, and desert sand. And especially in the 90s, early 90s. So I said, if I have to do something, I have to be in the oil and gas sector. That is where the, the, the career started. Um, and I didn't have the money because father was upset, so I didn't want to, you know, ask him uh, to fund me. So I said, I need to really start something from scratch. And that is what I started as a scrap. And the scrap was available uh, plenty from the oil and gas construction. Uh, but that time, uh, nobody knew that the, the desert had scrap. And it was going to Pakistan. You know, and, and the ex-Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawaz Sharif, had a small steel plant. And he was, you know, acquiring all this steel scrap and exporting to Pakistan. He had a small shredding plant in Dubai. And during that holiday, somebody I met from Kerala uh, told me about this. You know, and coming from the metallurgical background, I went to see the, the factory. And that is where the, the opportunity opened up. You know, and I asked him, what is the scrap price? So I still remember in 1995, it was $163 a ton. And now it is $550 a ton. And that's the time I was importing the shipment to Mangalore for my father's steel factory. And I was buying it $173 a ton. So I saw this $10 parity over there. So I called up my dad with a lot of excitement. I said, Dad, uh, I'll give you $6 cheaper uh, than scrap, and you have to open a letter of credit to me. So that is how the, the company started. Alamadi, my father's name is Mickey Ahmed. And uh, we made a deal, you know, uh, $4 for me and $6 for him. Uh, but he'll open a letter of credit, uh, and I go and discount it in HSBC. And that is where my capital came from, and that's where it started. Thank you, Faisal. That's very interesting. You know, um, many entrepreneurs today actually uh, think that you know, if I had the money, uh, I could build uh, something very big. And uh, but more than money, it's actually the how you narrow down on what opportunities you have and keep the mind open in terms of thinking big. Right? That's one of the things that we actually need to look at is to think big, think out of the box and look at the opportunities that come in. That's a great example. But I'm also, you know, I think your dad actually was not very angry with you, otherwise he would not have opened the LC. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, every father wanted the child to be with him. Correct? Nobody wants the children to go away. But um, uh, and, and that's what I advise the parents, you know, let them leave. Let them learn from themselves. They'll come back. 
Absolutely, and that's a great example. Now you are here 30 years hence having this conversation. I'm sure your father is very proud of you. He is, he is, he is. Yeah. So from there, you went ahead and did these uh, castings. And now I heard, on, I saw on the video that it's probably among one of the largest in the world. Again, you looked at it from a large scale. You know, didn't want to do it small and as you um, mentioned earlier, you wanted India to be big in something. Uh, well, you used UAE as a base, but um, you know, to me actually when I look at all the companies that where Indians actually operate, if you look at the 50 biggest companies around the world, around 20 of them are have at the C-suite Indians. Okay, that's that is where Indians excel, the human resources, the, the brain part. And that is one aspect of it. The other aspect which is not as common as your story is also the, indus the, the industry part of it, entrepreneurship part of it. How is when you were there and you continue to live there okay, and you have seen the changes in, in the UAE, you have seen the changes happening in India over the last 30 years. And with in specific context to the ecosystem that is
need to think differently. I'll give you an example. Um, when I, I decided that after I sold the first business in 2012, uh, Mr. Technocasting, uh, it happened, uh, I wasn't planning to sell any business, but you know, when you do well, things change. Uh, what do we do next? I said, no, no more business, finish, make a lot of money, you know, successful, come back and do philanthropy. And that is where the Narakam School project came in. And I said, you know, why not a government school better than a private school? And always, you should have curiosity. You know, why only Germans can do, why can't we do it? I said, why not a government school better than a private school? When I built that school in 90 days, using prefab technology, because there was no precast factory in India existed at that time, in 2012. And I found one factory in Tirupur, which was shut down by Chennai Sills. I all the way came, met the owner, uh, he only speaks Tamil. Uh, with, luckily, being a Malayali, half Tamil was possible. So I told him that, you know, I will run this factory for six months. Uh, he said, for what? I want to build a school. He said, no way, I have a lot of money. Yeah, I don't have to do this. You know, let it be there. Then I have to beg him. You know, I said, you know, it's a national crime, you know, shutting this technology. He bought it from Germany at that time. Somehow convinced him, and that is how all the elements cast it from Tirupur. Um, and it got stuck in Walaya check post for a week because they saw this big concrete panels and columns are coming in, then they don't know what is this for, correct? Then we have to go and convince this Walaya check post people what it is. So what I'm trying to say is when I came in and started the school, uh, things change in education sector. That prompted me to start the prefab factory in Kochi. So I went to the government, you know, I got some big land over here. And it took almost a year for the approval process, nothing happened. So I just said, no way, it's going to work in Kerala. So I went to Krishnagiri in Tamil Nadu. So Tamil Nadu was very quick, I took 42 acres of land. Then what happened was, I was so naive, I did not know about the politics in India. Because when you are away you know, from India for a long period of time, we think it's like Dubai. <laughs> So he said, nothing will happen, you know, it's modern technology, robotics and all that. I went and spent 500 crores in nine months in Krishnagiri. <coughs> then I get a call uh, from Chennai. Hello, Tangamani uh, the they are here. I'm Faisal. I'm the industries minister, you know, uh, chief minister Jalalitha wanted to meet you. I said, for what? So yeah, he said, you know, you're not taking any subsidy because you're eligible for 100 crore subsidy from the government. So I said, you know, I don't want subsidy because uh, I knew that if you take anything from these politicians, they're finished, you know, 100 crore, 200 crore will go to them. So I smartly said, uh, you know, God has been too kind to me. I don't want subsidy. Thank you very much. Then after one month, he calls me again. He said, no, 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 you have to come to Chennai. So I go to Chennai, I meet uh, with my wife, so I go always travel with my wife. You know, today she couldn't come, unfortunately, the kids are at home. So he saw this young couple, um, he said, why are you not taking money from the government, you know, this uh, subsidies? I said, madam, you know, I am here for a purpose in India. And I want to bring in technology which transforms education and you know. Then I showed the video of Narakao School. Everyone threatened me, no, your factory is gone, you know, it has gone to Jalalitha. But to our surprise, you know, she called two IAS officers and said, please make sure that nobody troubles this factory. Not one penny was given. So what I'm trying to tell the story is, when you create an impact and when you're honest in replying to the questions, you're here for a purpose. Most of the time, in my experience, even in India, you know, people have never troubled me. Correct? So you need to have the social consciousness. Correct? Any business you do, even in a small area, you know, if you create that social consciousness, most of the time, you get away from the troubles. You know? And since then, I've been done many businesses, you know, um, it takes delays, you know, all the approval processes. Now, one of my files is stuck in Manjeri uh, for the geology department because I cannot remove the soil. 
He said, no, no, there are 280 files. Who are you to tell me that you, know, you need it tomorrow? Uh, so, uh, these troubles are there, but you know, India is a market for the future. You know, I am a big fan of India, honestly speaking, even though there are big challenges. And every economy has gone through these challenges. It's not that we are the only country who is going through these challenges. You know? So, I think it's getting better and better. But my experience is, you know, you do something for your neighbors when you are running business. And also, you try to convey the message very clearly what is the purpose behind this business. That's a very wonderful way of, uh, you know, an anecdote of how to manage the ecosystem. And that's a good lesson to all of us here. Because many, many times what we try to do is try to find shortcuts. And that is what actually puts us in trouble. So I'll give you one example here in this context. You know, I'm building this clinical wellness resort. It's a 30 acres. Uh, so, I said, you know, because two important resources, I want electricity and water, correct? So, so I went to Trivandrum Engineering College, Dr. Biju, I met him. And I said, listen, I mean, you have so much of rainfall and, and every water is going to the sea and the landslide and all that happens, including from my land. So I said, what is the solution for that? So he came and studied the land. He said, Faisal, there's a solution. But we need to do an ultrasound survey, you know, of your land. So we did six months ultrasound survey up to 100 meter depth. And we started recharging the excess monsoon water to the ground of 30 acres using aquifer technology. So this three years ago. So suddenly, uh, last year we started to build the resort. All the neighbors came running to the main gate, security people. You know, we want to know what is going on inside. So Joseph, my foundation, had went and asked him, what's the problem? No, 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 suddenly we see this well water is coming up. Correct. So we don't know where it is coming up. So what had happened was, because of the recharging from our land, the neighbor's wells were getting water. So we said, please come. So we took all the neighbors, showed them the technology, you know, from the rainwater harvesting dam, how we are recharging the ground. You won't believe it. Today we are the, the most loved company in the entire neighbors, you know. Uh, <laughs> they are all out to help us, you know. So this is this is a great example of how you know if you have social consciousness uh, and do something good not only just for you for the neighbors. Yeah. So I think everyone can follow this. Yeah. Yeah, that's again another lovely story because you know we have excess rain and most of the you know if you look at even in Cochin actually the water table has been going down yeah. consistently. Uh, Tamil Nadu has made a change in the laws that uh, you need to have recharge uh, even if you build an apartment and things like that. I think there are lessons that uh, Kerala can uh, adopt and of course examples which are already here thanks to you. Social consciousness, social awareness and social responsibility. I think that really brings the ecosystem to support what you are doing and in terms of some of the industries that we have here today, I think there's a lot more of interaction that has to happen with our neighbors, with, with the society and I think media plays a big role. Absolutely. Here. And Kerala, you have a very nice active positive media but you also have the other side of it because there's always two sides to the coin and I see we have Roshan City, the positive thing that we get. <laughs> We have uh, Dhanam sitting here, yeah. right? <laughs> so, so th that's a positive media as well. And we have the negative media too. Now, unfortunately, it's human psychology that people always like to watch and listen to not so good news. I'm not saying bad news, but they're more interested in the negatives than the positives. And that is a mindset change, not just in Kerala, but in most parts of the world, it's like that. And therefore, in terms of responsibility and in terms of creating that awareness, as entrepreneurs, as industrialists, we do have a role. Now, that also transcends to responsibility, because you can also misuse that role to a large extent and um, you know, there are repercussions for that. You have moved from, you know, you, you moved from a hardcore businessman and uh, you now have a certain hat of a philanthropist. 
medical um, and healthcare. And this is another subject which has been uh, a hot topic right now because Kerala is a land of Ayurveda. And Kerala is also attracting a lot of medical health tourism. In fact, only a uh, few days back, we were all in a conversation and uh, uh, JD also was there in that conversation. And we are looking at, you know, one of the biggest incomes of Kerala is, and the positioning of Kerala is as a tourism destination. Combine that with medical tourism, combine that with Ayurveda, how do we actually create a holistic ecosystem wellness, health and wellness and that's something that we actually discussed and Dr. Saji also was there in that, on that call. So you on the other hand, you have gone ahead and actually done, you know, you have the proof of the concept, you have already tried, you are already trying it in, in Tula. What made you do this? So, you know, uh, when I came uh, to Kerala, uh, I'm uh, always, you know, I love this place where I born. And nobody, I think, has really understood the potential of our state, you know, potential of our state. Because when I went to UA, as I said, only GDP was oil and gas. What is our GDP? Our GDP is the nature which God has given us. Correct. Second is the coconuts, you know, and third is the Ayurveda. It's all is here, correct, and, and brilliant minds, you know, whether it is engineers or doctors or nursing. Everything in Kerala exports to the world. So my thinking was when this COVID hit, you know, I built this hospital. When I started to plan the healthcare in you know, 2012, you know, I said only two industry I wanted to transform. You know, if you really look at it, I went from one industry to totally different. There's no correlation from foundry to construction technology to healthcare now to wellness. So a lot of people ask me, how do you do this? I said, you know, I find the, you all have to find the gap, you know, and where is the resources available? So when I came in to do the healthcare, everybody said, what do you know about healthcare? And how many doctors are here? Anybody? Yeah. Sorry to say this, they are the toughest people to manage. He's Ayurvedic. Yeah, Ayurvedic. So now you are opposite. <laughs> no, there is a reason. Correct? And I started studying the psychology of this. Why doctors behave the way they behave? The one reason is there is a huge supply and demand gap. So people pay a lot of money to get into MBBS seats. Correct? And their immediate thinking was they would have loaned, taken the loan, they would have sold the land. I wanted to make money. Correct? So the journey starts to make money. So they lose that compassion to that profession. Okay. On the other hand, I'm studying Ayurveda doctors and therapists. Ayurveda and Kerala is a service. Correct? I mean, it's seva. And that is where the mindset is like that. You know, they are so humble, so nice. And they wanted to give. Correct? Other side, they wanted to take what they borrowed. Correct? And this contrast is what we need to balance it. So I built this hospital with a lot of struggle and I said, you know, I went to Clinical Clinic because I gave $5 million to Clinical Clinic to US for research funding. So it's in 2012 when I sold the company because everybody wants, when you have money, everybody says, we want this, we want that, you know, please support. So I went to Cleveland to really see their healthcare setup. I went and saw the innovation center. I was very, very impressed, more than 100 year old organization. And I said, agreed, I'll give $5 million. So normally when you give $5 million, they give two chairs, you know, so, and you can name in your father's name or your name or your wife's name. So I said, I don't want any name because I don't believe, you know, in putting my name anywhere. So I said, we don't want anything. What do you want? The first time you're saying that, you know, somebody is saying, we don't want any chair, name, nothing, the global board. I, I didn't say, I said, no, nothing. I just want two people from your institution. I said, for what? I said, I want, I intend to build a hospital in Kerala. And I want to replicate the Cleveland clinical care pathways in our country. Correct? So, nine months it took to convince them. They said, it's a complex deal they ever done. You know, somebody is giving $5 million 
for in turn to get two people with the knowledge, you know, to build a hospital in, in Kerala. And that is how the journey of Maitra started. You know, it took four years, they were on my board, to really transform the mind of my doctors. We had six doctors on my board. So I used to send every quarter for them to Cleveland Clinic just to change their mindset. Okay? Because they the doctors are very cool. They are like engineer or businessman, anyone. They enjoy their life after their normal working hours. They don't have the air that I am a cardiologist, I am a neurologist and all that. So I succeeded 15% at that time. You know, 15%. Yeah. Then I started to build, now it's five years and then COVID hit. You know, and 30 acres of land I had it, uh, 12 years ago. It's a beautiful piece of land uh, next to the airport. And uh, I built a home in 35 days, you know, in a warehouse which has been there for 30 years, you know. And I had to innovate my own technology because there's no air conditioning, it's water cooled and solar powered, it's net zero. 35 days, you know, and I got 3D panel technology from Austria, you know, I, I, I bought it in three containers. Tuck, 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 it built. And I was staying there and whenever I went and stayed in my house when I came to Calicut, I was always energized because this air conditioning, you know, after some time, it sucks your energy. You know, your skin gets dry. But in a water cool building, and this water cool technology has been there from ages. Okay, when you go to palaces in Jaipur and Jodhpur and all those places, you will see olden palaces are built out of this. You know, they have water cooling. So that is how the idea came for this clinical wellness. I said, God, Ayurveda. You know, we have therapists. So I went to stay to Kotaka Ayurveda Shala. So P.K. Wari was there. He was 99 at that time. In my life, I never touched the Ayurvedic oil. Correct? So went and saw him. Fortunately, Maitra has got a good name. You know, a trusted hospital, you know, professionally run. You know, they don't squeeze the patients, unwanted, no MRIs and CT scans. So his nephew was admitted sometime back in my hospital. So he was, you know, he was very excited to meet me, you know, because being ethical. So we clicked, you know. Then at 99, he took me around to show Kotaka. My wife was there and I gave me his book. Um, you know, he passed away, I think, last year. And that is where my knowledge of Ayurveda came in. And I said, what is 5,000 years of history, you know, it's here. Why nobody is taken to the world? Correct. The problem in Ayurveda is the the process. I, you know, now CGI's owner is here. Uh, the process. Some people like it. Majority don't like it. Correct. Because you have a lot of oil. Then you go to do the steaming. Then you have to take your own bath with those powders and all that. So today we are changing everything. Are we saying if modern therapy can do something different? Why not Ayurveda? So we need to start thinking. How can we improve all these things for the current requirement? Because we are stuck with Ayurveda in those days. Correct? Today, I mean, Ajit asked me, you are looking young and uh, you know, you lost weight. I did first time in my life a three week Panchakarma treatment at Tula. You know, I have a team of people. I had hypothyroid for 25 years. You know, I used to take thyroxin every day and it is a pain because if you traveling and you don't take thyroxine, your uric acid changes, your cholesterol changes. Everything now is reversed. Correct? I never knew that Ayurveda could reverse thyroid problem. Correct? Hashimoto's. See, I'm, in three weeks, I reduce the dose by 50%. Why I'm sharing all this, my personal thing is, so much knowledge is here in a state. And we can have so many, hundreds of Ayurvedic institution, but today the future of medicine is integrated health. You, know, you need to combine modern medicine with Ayurveda. And that is what the potential of Kerala has got in the future. And I thought, why not create a model? See, if you really look at my life now, it's all creating model for people to learn. You know, I don't believe in intellectual properties. You know, I develop a lot of technology myself, including the vacuum furnace, there are only two furnaces in the world run on that. One in Germany and one in mine. One is mine. But everybody asked me why I'm not patenting it. I said, who are you to patent? 
we came into the world, did God patent anything? Nothing. Correct? And we don't know how long we are going to live. Correct? So this is all the Western greed, in my opinion, is we come to the East. Correct? And in the East, our culture is giving. Correct? In the West, it's all holding. And that is where the, in my opinion, the, the, the problem of the world today. You know, one person holding all the I opening next year, I've been booked more than 200 people to come from the West. You know, I'm 80 booking already from US. So this is the potential, but we need to do something big. You know, we need to really think big. You know, we need to say, wow, I mean, we need to export this to the world. We want the world to come here. Then Kerala will flourish. That's quite inspirational. <laughs> and, and truly, you know, to combine all this and actually showcase it to the world, that itself is something phenomenal. Thank you for that. And that actually deserves a big hand. I have many questions. But I'm sure there are more questions out of the audience as well. So I would actually like to open the floor for questions and uh, if people can just stand up and... So I, before we open up, I just wanted to, because Joe is here, I'll show you a brief of the wellness because Ayurveda is what we discussed. I'll just show you the quickly certain uh, the, the features of... Uh, can you, anyone can... Just go back the, the, the first slide, yeah. So this is uh, these are actual drawings. Um, uh, the work is going on. It's clinical wellness. So this is the first concept now. Bringing normally you have a lot of resorts, wellness resorts all over the world, like Lanzerhof and Viva Meyer and Vana and Ananda CGI. So this is clinical wellness because you are everything is evidence based. There. You come there. You have all the, the the investigation done. You tell your problem. We develop the care pathways. Before you go, you get the result and you go continue the journey. Just go quickly. Human beings want five things, you know, these five senses. And if you can satisfy these five senses, they'll come back to you. Okay. So what we are working on this in this 30 acres is this five senses. This we all know the backwaters. This is what the, the, the improve the quality of life, the combining various traditional um, medicines uh, and practices with the modern medicine. So all these are available in under one roof. Then this is important. I met these two gentlemen. Aurelio is come from Austria to India 22 years ago. And he lives in Auroville. So my journey started 40 years ago in Auroville. You know, I was a bit of a rebel. I was always curious when I was in Manipal. And uh, we I was the captain of the team of basketball. So we lost the first around itself in Anamalai University. So me and my vice captain said, let's go to Auroville and, and stay in the rooftop. Uh, there's three houses at that time. So that's the first experience uh, in Auroville Pondicherry. And I said, wow, what a life. There's no money. You know, you serve, you get a token, you go to the common kitchen, you eat your food, you have a good time. And everything was biking there, cycling. You can go and milk your cows. So I said, what a fascinating world. And there were 3,000 Families from all over the world lived in Auroville at that time. So I said, one day when I make money, I want to build something smaller. You know, and that is the, the fundamental reason why Thula is, is born. Uh, and uh, Vedanta Academy, I was in the ashram three months ago. Uh, he's another amazing human being, 96 years old. He addressed the world last Sunday. Uh, he did 65 years of research on human intellect, buddhi. So he says, why behave? we behave like this? You know, God has uh, given something extraordinary to human being, that is intellect. But today, we use the intellect in, for the wrong reasons, you know. So that is an academy which teaches life. And it's called School of Life. It's a three-year program, you know, I, uh, and it's online. Uh, please go and Google them. If you have time, go and visit in Lonavala this institution. It will transform your life completely. You know, you will be grounded, you will understand the purpose, why we are all here in this world. And that will really make you happy you know, and do whatever you wanted to do in your career. So they are going to be there in the academy as a full-time teacher. So 
uh, people can interact. There will be one hour classes in the morning and the evening and plus the private classes. So this is completely sustainable. Uh, I don't think I'll pay, last three years I've not paid one rupee to the government because uh, I have my own water, own electricity and everything through solar. So same thing been applied in the entire 30 acre campus. We have 1.2 megawatt solar power plant. We have 40 million liters of uh, water harvesting going on there now. So we have enough water which we are recycling everywhere. This entrance uh, to the 30 acres, it's 20 meters above the main highway. Let's go. So this is, uh, uh, it's integrated uh, farm technology. So everything, you know, it's like a, under one roof because it's the place to give know-how to the people. So people come there, it's not just they're coming for you know, health issues. They can learn so many things, you know, because that's what I want to really put Kerala on the world map. And that's my dream, you know, and I think it's, it's uh, combining everyone's help, correct? Because I have this energy to do something, but we all can come together, you know, and, and people can learn from each other. And that's what I always believe, you know, this education is about exchanging ideas and knowledge, you know, between us. Yes, quickly. So this is, uh, yes, go forward. So this uh, is it's called organic architecture. Uh, this is the tree which is around 80 years in the side. So I didn't want to cut the tree. So I got an uh, architect from, I think, uh, three or four from all over the world working on this project. And everyone would have heard about Zaha Hadid. You know, she's no more. And, and she's expert in organic architecture. You know, you don't spoil the nature. Within the nature, you work. And, and develop a building. So this is a beautiful building, its construction is going on and you can see all the solar panels over there. Um, and this is where the clinical block is, we have a theatre inside, we have four ICUs, we have Ayurveda suites. So it, it's something uh, nobody has ever attempted in the world uh, which is going to come to Kerala. Um, and these are the, 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 you see the shape, uh, everything is around the tree. So we, whatever tree we have uh, uprooted, we are in the nursery and we are going to bring back and, and, and put it into the same site. This uh, inside reception, there is no reception as such because everything is using technology. Uh, every guest knows where they wanted to go. It's all open areas and, and Kerala's biggest thing is nature. I, mean, I was just looking at it. You know, I mean you will not see this in so many places in the world. Correct. So we need to really use architecture to really capture this imagination God has been given to us. Correct. But today our architects are so stupid. I hope there are not too many architects over here. Uh, yeah, I mean, concrete jungle all over the place. Correct. I mean, and and that is not the government's responsibility. It is the promoters have to think through. Correct. They should be self-responsible, not to spoil our nature. Yes, quickly. These are the rooms you can see. If you see all the rooms are facing open areas, otherwise you will see a lot of corridors, you know, dark. I mean, you know, you lose your energy. You know, you need to make sure that the you know, environment is around you. Your energy is always up. So every room is uh, open to the nature. Other thing is, you know, many of the Western, especially Middle East uh, clients, they like privacy. And now we are developing rooms where you can have gym inside, you can have therapy inside, you can have yoga inside. So the, the architecture has to think through, you know, of cultures. That means we need to know about different cultures, correct? Indian culture is different from the Middle East, Middle East is different from Europe. And we need to know the world is going to come here and we need to cater to those people. These are clinics, we have four clinics and other thing is we go to hospital. You know, your disease will become double when you sit in the doctor's clinic, correct? One is, doctor is rude, <laughs> second is the ambience is rude. So, most of the disease happens because of stress, correct? So, what we can do, the Kerala, every place can de-stress people, correct? If you really think smartly and design smartly. So, these are the modern clinics where you are a friend, doctor is a friend, correct? And that's a concept, so that you can open up to the doctor. So this is the protocol, I mean you can see it's a multidisciplinary team and there's a diagnostic facility, we have CT scans, MRIs, everything inside. 
So you don't have even go to Maitra because I have everything in Maitra. But the idea is, you know, only for critical surgeries you go to Maitra, but the rest of the things can happen here. This is a very advanced spa and rehabilitation facilities because I said, you know, as I said, if you are doing, you do something big. Okay. If you really want to put Kerala on the world map, they should not have seen anywhere else in the world. You know, otherwise people don't come here. Correct? Because now, uh, I, I'm, uh, I know Bill Gates personally through the foundation. So, so we wanted to have a global philanthropy conference when the resort opens. Correct? So all the, the, the richest people in the world is going to come. Correct? Once they come, when they realize there is nothing like this in the world, they are going to spread the words. Correct? Same thing with celebrities. So Kerala has got that much potential and this will trigger many new industries to come in the same way. So the ecosystem has to develop you know, and, that is, and, and benefits everyone. Correct? I should not think that, oh my god, if I uh, allow uh, Joe's to come inside, Joe's is going to... No, I want Joe's to come because Joe's grows, everybody grows, I grow because the whole world will come. Correct? And that is a different mindset altogether. We need to have a collaborative ecosystem to make Kerala the main hub of health and wellness. So this is uh, the spa area. You can see it's quite a nice design. Uh, it, it's it's all real. And this is what the new Ayurveda suite is going to look like. I mean, now we are redeveloping the bed. Everything happens in the one suite. You, know, you have a steam room. You have a Moroccan bath inside. Therapists do everything. You go in and you go out. This is my own Pachakarma treatment. I'll just show you the results. So we see here my antibody, my TSH was 7.42 on 2nd of June. Today it is 0.3. So I'm on 50% thyroxine. And uric acid, fasting blood sugar, BM, everything dropped. But 25 years it never happened to me in modern medicine. Correct? I know how much chemical I've gone into my body. I wish I knew Ayurveda 25 years back. Correct. Even though I run a large hospital. So I have my doctor say, if you start promoting Ayurveda, <laughs> what is going to happen to Maitra? <laughs> Nothing is going to happen to Maitra. Correct. The table should be plugged. <laughs> <laughs> we are so happy. Huh? <laughs> Nothing is going to happen. Because you know, human beings lifestyle is such, you know, everything is needed. You know, we need modern medicine is good for emergency surgeries, which Ayurveda will take years to catch up. But and that is not the purpose. Ayurveda is for chronic illnesses, correct, for lifestyle. It goes into the cellular level and that is basically going for your particular problem and solve it. So we have all this full body cryotherapy, HBOT, anti-gravity treadmill for weight loss and all that. Um, the, the sports medicine, uh, all these surgeries, robotic surgeries. We, we are one of the largest center outside the United States for Smith & Nephew Robo is in Maitra. So eight months we have done 500 knee replacement with Robo and people walk out on the second day and 100% accuracy, correct? So, so these things is what we need to bring it, you know, into in, in Kerala and, and bring the world to come here because the, 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 the cost is so cheap. All the, you know, this is a new thing in the world. Everyone wants to look good. So we can't ignore this. It's a big industry, you know, cosmetics, especially in the Western world. You know, I mean, I was uh, driving from Rome to Monaco uh, with uh, 80 cars and 60 are from America. And most of the women I saw, they were like doll. As I said, what is it? They're all looking like doll. They all had the Botox done and, you know, they look so young. And each one is 60 year old, looks like 30 year old. And that is where the Western world is going. You know, because they are so unhappy in life, they keep thinking that if I do all this thing, I look better and be happy. And this is something which we wanted to teach, you know. You, know, you don't have to do all these things to be happy, you have to look at inside. You know, and that is what I think our culture in centuries, uh, you know, we are all happy without doing any makeup, correct? And, and, but the West has to do the makeup to be happy, and still they are unhappy. Just move, these are all the, the same thing, and we have all the other surgeries and this kind of just I want to show the, the, the farming thing. So this is uh, all inside. Then we have five restaurants inside in different experiences. Uh, trying to get the first Michelin star to Kerala uh, curated menu. Um, this is how the building is going to look like.
and this is a farm. So we are creating a farm experience uh, where uh, you know if you really want to feel happy, you have to do service, seva. And there, you know, the people come there. You know, they can do farming. They can. We have 13 schools under Prism, which is managed by the foundation. So I want to encourage people to go and teach these poor children and give their experiences. Correct to the neighbors. We are adopting these six villages around the resort now. So the fishermen, they you are know, interacting with the people. You know, amazing food in Northern Kerala. So we we are encouraging women to become the restaurant owners there, so we can take the. Uh, the, the foreigners to go and interact with them. So we need to really integrate the society around any business. So that's what we are trying to do here. So we have all these uh, cascading pools in amphitheater. And... Yes, move fast, I think. It's a rainwater tank. And also we have a zip line coming up, so just to have the adrenaline rush. Uh, you know, for the... Otherwise people come for two, three weeks, they get bored and you know, so so all this, and this is behind the, the Tula, uh, it's an amazing place, uh, it's untouched, uh, nobody knew even in Calicut there's a place existing, that is the beauty of Kerala, so we have not explored Kerala, you know, in, in full. That's it, so this Maitra, you all know that, I mean, it's just next, so people are there, it's one of the most sophisticated hospitals in the country, and how many people have seen, everything is individual suites, it's, so my problem was, First two years, I was burning cash like crazy. So I was wondering why people are not coming to Maitra because they were scared to come inside because it is so posh. They thought it is too expensive. In fact, we are on par with all the hospitals in Calicut. But now things have changed. Word of mouth have gone in, you know. So the Maitra is the go-to hospital um, in Calicut. This is the robot I was talking about, and that's it. So this is the whole master plan. Uh, we are except the. This is the second phase. I'm doing all those other things uh, uh, together. Uh, and this is the meditation and the sound healing uh, zone. So I'm taking Matra Mandir underground, you know, so that the, all the meditation, the sound journey, the sound healing, and you walk into the water. I mean, you stay there, you sit there in the water for meditation. And this is the largest uh, fountain probably in India, which is man made, you know, I think 8,000 cubic meter water. So that fountain, 30 acres can hear the sound of water. And water is a healer, you know, and that is what we are trying to work. And this is the largest uh, man-made pool. Uh, it's a lake, so we have water sports and um, rehabilitation center. On the other side is a floating yoga pavilion, you know. So you do the yoga uh, in uh, the floating water, the feeling. So these are the things which you have to create out of the box for the world to come. Correct. So we need the 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 the. the High net worth people from Europe and Western world to come over here to Kerala. And that is where the economy starts rotating, correct? Because then we need to charge them. Because they can afford, because we are very, very cheap compared to what is happening in Lanza Hop and Vivoma and all other places. That's it. So I just thought, I mean, you know, I guess we are doing Thank you, thank you. That was beautiful. And, you know, what started off with metallurgy and now it's into health and wellness. You started off, but you you maintained the basic principles of you know you have a purpose. Yes. You are looking at profits, which is important to give back, and you are looking at social responsibility. Yes. And you're not looking at only this, but also you know, creating the right kind of ecosystem and the environment in Kerala to adapt this, and also to this being an example for people to emulate and take it forward. So that's. Fantastic, and uh, I would say thank you for that. And I would like to invite our good audience here to. Faisal is here, so first question right away. Korean. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, most of the Malayalis think doctor. What is your perspective on this? Lack of exposure to the world. And between us, you know, I mean, unfortunately, we don't communicate with each other. I was asking yesterday, Madhubhumi is, uh, I'm very, you know, a close friend of Shreem. Shreem, somebody was staying in Tula, you know, the uh, day before yesterday. So I asked uh, the person, that, do you all meet together about the negative and positive news? I said, every, I don't read papers anymore, I don't watch television, because I get depressed, correct? 
So I asked, why can't we change this? You know, especially in Kerala, we have Madhubhumi, Manorama and few important newspapers. So his answer was, why is it we try, but nobody wants to sit together. Okay. That's a problem. And same thing with businessmen. Okay. We all have nice dinners, nice parties, you know, everybody enjoys it, but we don't discuss the core of the problem. Okay. Because we feel that if I discuss, I'm exposing my strength or weaknesses. And most of the time, it's weaknesses. So people are holding to themselves. That's what I said, the value system, your integrity, your honesty. If you have these three important things, you can be open.
question of following up on the dreams that you have. You know, dreams alone are not enough. But you need to act on it, you need to strategize, you need to plan, you need to execute. Thank you know, that's a good lesson for all of us. Can I can I ask one more question? Yeah, good evening. I am really passionate to or very happy to see the things which you have presented. And I'm also one of the big believers that Kerala can do great things. But what actually we are not doing is that we are not looking at very small things and leveraging these small things to make it big. Now like, look at the photograph of yours. This photograph is a wonderful thing. I think everybody can look at it. You see that you have created a very good infrastructure there. But what you see, uh, there's a road in front. You have made it look nice. But what really is the condition of the road in most parts of Kerala? Let me, to be complete first, let me add, that's why I just, I tell you this, what I was trying to get at, I'm not asking you a question, but I tried what time to get at, and how we can get there, is some of the prescription. I'm a management consultant also. See, uh, we, Kerala is like a beautiful child born with great features but who has forgotten how to comb her hair, brush her teeth, or take a bath. This is what we are. We have great features, we have great things which we can do. But what has spoiled us, because I am telling all this because I deal with many foreign people who come to India. We tell them, they see us, they know that we are great people who worked abroad and when, we, when they come here, we take us to, take them to certain infrastructure areas, they impress as soon as they get out. They see the filth around, they see the roads are bad, they see the infrastructure broken back. They will be nice to you, but they don't come back. Now, what we need here is not big things to be done in Kerala. We need to only focus on three, four areas wherein Kerala's core competence can be taken to the world. I was just talking recently, I think I'm sure that you've been to Switzerland. Switzerland is a small country. But when you go to Switzerland, there are three, four in four industries, they are global leaders. They are global leaders in watches, chocolates, uh, your uh, banking, and small industries, I mean, uh, precision equipment. Similarly, Kerala also can be global leaders. We are looking at many times, focusing on too many areas. We look at four areas where Kerala just have to look at. One area which you said is true. We need to be global. We can be global in healthcare worldwide, not the current level, we can be 50 times, 100 times what we are now. The second thing which we can be is connected to that tourism itself, which we are doing, again, not the level at which we are in, much bigger. The next thing, other thing which we have, we have a different type of population here. We don't have cheap labor. We have intellectual labor here. So, IT is a natural progression to that particular area. And the fourth thing is our ports and the geographical location which we have here, the ability that we need to, uh, what you uh, leverage on that location, cruise tourism and ports which we can come down. These four areas which we, we, we can focus and become global leaders. And what is that we need to do? Clean the locations outside, pick up the garbage and throw, fix the roads, basic infrastructure, let the private sector globally it will come down. And that's also very simple ways of doing this. So we don't require to come down and have the industry ministry going all over the world to do that. Just fix the locations around. Remove our garbage, fix the roads. Make our backwaters swimmable. Right, Jim? <laughs> Every call, that is one state, that's how he signs off his, uh, his, uh, his call. I think I totally agree with what he's saying, but you know, I have a saying, you know, today we only complain about government not doing something. I think we all are responsible also. So what are you doing to change that? It's important. Correct? In our own four walls, if you can really create models, you know, I mean, how to clean your area well, and how to build a process. And I think more and more people come and do this. You know, I'm sure these politicians and bureaucrats will change. You know, I think uh, 
we need to start talking even though we know our negative issues we need to start talking positive things correct and we need to bring audiences you know who are decision makers you know to start changing themselves i i'll give you an example of the current uh, tourism minister i mean he happened to come to maitra i never met him in india at that time his mother was uh, admitted in maitra recently so somebody said you know give him a call so i gave him a call uh, i said instead of giving a call i'll go and just meet him because i never met him so that is one day before i was uh, launching the brand tula in in in, in my place so i met him i went to see him and he was happy that i went all the way to see him and his mother and i said if you have time why don't you come so he came he came to my place he was blown away because of the whole ecosystem then i went alone with him and he said listen minister this is an opportunity to change kerala correct provided he said oh faisal how can you help me you know how can can you be in my board of advice i said no i am not going to be the board of advice correct <laughs> <laughs> because people think that you know i said no but i can help you he said how i said you come back whenever you are free but that four hours you should come without the phone or switch off the phone correct you take me to your constituency and then today i spoke to him in the afternoon he asked me when can i come because he is he is not getting well so i said when your health is okay you call me and uh, you know we'll go together so that particular conversation of 10 minutes is hit him correct then subsequently he came to my house uh, in, in charge he started to listen to me now correct why because he saw something you know which is impossible for people to dream that is possible in, in kerala correct and this is how you need to change the mindset of the people correct i mean i met uh, dr verno and uh, the the current uh, tourism uh, md uh, he was ex collector of teja teja correct so the idea behind is i mean he is a you know i mean casino group i mean they have done wonderful work correct i mean we have to be really proud of the work what they have done you know the whole world appreciate when they come to the the resort of uh, what joseph team has done i think we need more and more and more success stories correct and and that is where the change happens correct and i'm sure things are improving because i've born in kerala i've been there i've got beaten so badly i don't think anybody got so beaten up than what i got beaten up in 1983 correct but still i'm back here you know because i've seen the world you know i've lived across the world i had a home in the us in the most luxurious place in silicon valley in spain and everything but the soul is here people are so nice you know uh, we we have everything what uh, you know god can give and i think we need to think a little bit positive be optimistic bring the people debate discuss politely and things will change it, it doesn't matter how many times you fall what matters is how you get up and walk away from that and that's a beautiful example of coming back here and setting up all this what you have done any further questions yes One one thing I want to tell you that it's an inspiration that a non-clinician building a healthcare team because I'm also a non-clinician and we are building a healthcare company. So that way I'm really appreciate what you're building. Second, it's the right time what you're building, what you're building right now. Whereas India itself is coming with Ayush Vishas and Heal in India project. It's a great, great opportunity. I traveled to 55 countries to build the patients to India. So I know it's a great opportunity what you're building. So this is basic two question because we are a startup. The question level will be also not that high. Five. When you started your first company, how did you build a trust in front of the patient or the the the, the customers? Because you are nothing there and you are to establish. How did you find your first customers and how did you build trust that people are to believe you and to get it? That's the first question. Second is that you are definitely sitting here with. seeing a lot of success but double or triple the times of failures also but the highest failure when you hit in your life how did you overcome and how fast you overcome it i don't know you because you are a startup correct it's your quality whether it's a product or a service 
is better than what he is getting. Correct. Second thing it says, what is your price? Is it cheaper than what I am getting? If you are able to give this two things, they will come. Correct. But it's not that easy. You know, you need to have that persuasive capacity to convince him that you know my quality is better than what you are getting, and that's important. You know, you need to design or define the product or a service and make sure that anybody challenges you that you should be able to really convince that customer I am the best in that. Okay. And that's what happened to me. You know, I said, I traveled around the world before I started the foundry. The foundry was small. It's 7 crore was the first investment. It's a miniature foundry. But I said, my product quality should be better than German. So my benchmark was German casting. That means I will study the quality, the finishes, how they were, the process they have done, you know. So this is where you need to go about it. Okay? What people are doing today is, they don't do any of this research. You know, they Google, they go to the internet, they say, oh, I'm going to do this. Okay? And that is a struggle. Okay? And that's number one. Second question, what did you ask? Look, the failure is with your kind Obviously, so my failure is was the first five years. They say the, the rejection of my castings, but I did not go down. Why? Immediately, I knew that I will not be able to repay to the bank right? because at the first repayment after one year holiday. So I went to Ensign Grinley's bank. Fortunately, there was a Malayali credit manager. You know, uh, I told him, "Listen, I don't think the next year first repayment I'll be able to pay." He said, Faisal, you're crazy. The repayment is after 15 months. And you're saying that you will not be able to pay now. He said, I wanted to be upfront. Correct? So I wanted to reschedule my repayment because I don't want to have a sorry face cut. Because I know that I'm not going to repay. Correct? That helped me. He said, you're such an honest guy. Correct? You are anticipating your failure and you're coming and telling me that you need to reschedule it. Correct? And he rescheduled my loan amount at that time. So I think this is important. That's why I said your honesty, integrity is so critical. And since then, they became my fan. They said, whatever you want, you ask me more. Correct? And that is where I had the courage to expand my facilities. Same thing with the customer. I had a policy. I will never take more than that time my net margin was 6%. And I said, maximum is 10%. So I used to give the breakdown of my pricing to my customers. Correct? Imagine a customer goes through that and say, wow, he's such an honest guy. Correct? And that is where the, the trust being built. And then they will drive your prosperity, the customers. Correct? They are the one who will say, I want more, I want more, I want more capacity. And that's my my story of uh, my 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 foundry business. Yeah. So you have for me, yeah, honesty and integrity there. And as startups, you know, some of you are startups here, and for sure you will have failures. And not everything that you do will actually succeed. But you need to go back to your investor, your board, or your uh, customer and tell them that this is what it is. Bear with us. And this is a classic example where, you know, the stakeholders are not just your customer and your vendor, it's also your lender from whom you are borrowed. So that whole ecosystem, everybody is a stakeholder in your business. You have to respect them for what they are and you need to be absolutely upfront and honest with them. I'm sure you will win friends. Very rarely do you lose, uh, actually. And because that's people are afraid. You know, the, why they don't do that is, um, you know, Ms. Kora is, they're afraid. Oh, what happens if I tell the truth? You know, will they stop funding? Now, that fear should not be there. You know, in life, it should be fearless. You know, because we have no guarantee that we will go out of this room. And why are we afraid? Correct? So, if you have that attitude, you know, you have nothing to worry. You know, people, see, there are two things people, one is the or future, we think of the future now, and we think of the past now. Don't do that. You be at the current position and, and see what I can do today. Go and tell the investors, go and tell the suppliers, I made a mistake. They will support you. And just a reminder, I think, Ajay, yeah. one part of the question Ajay asked, uh, exit, no, yeah. exit, yeah. Oh. 
I think this I get uh, very often you know, because I had three exits or four exits in my career, but nothing was planned, honestly. Um, the first exit was when I beat the Germans and Americans, and uh, nobody still noticed me. You know, I was making, at that time, my revenue was $200 million in 2007 on the foundry and valves. And I used to make a net margin of 26% at that time. So I used to make $50 million cash. And, and it's all happened from 2004 onwards. So I had zero debt and I had excess um, money in the bank. And I used to wear the same worker's dress. I had a coverall with blue and blue. So when people come to my factory, they don't know who's the boss and who's the worker. Yeah, so I was a fun-loving guy and uh, we had this, I built this community center. And the reason for the community center was I loved people. So I used to have food with them. We had free breakfast, lunch, dinner, all the facilities of exercises, reading, library, cleaning, everything was there. Indoor courts. So one day I get a call uh, from the ruler's or the, the chairman of uh, Free Zone's office, you know, Sheikh Khalid. He said, they all speak Hindi, by the way, Sharjah ruling family. So he called me and said, Faisal, what are you doing? I have a problem. I said, why, Sheikh? Because I don't speak Hindi. He said, you built some community center for the employees. Now everybody is complaining that you know we also want it. Correct? Now my port employees are saying that we also want it. So now you are creating a problem. So, and he was serious. So I went back to my wife. She was running the center at that time. And said, Shabana, instead of doing good, everybody is upset with us. So we have to figure out the solution. So part of the center, we opened a new coffee shop and said, let us do subsidized coffee and tea and sandwiches for all the free zone people. Correct. And we opened the entire community center for the locals for free. And they like uh, exercise and gym, bodybuilding and all that. So we had a beautiful gym. So when I opened that, people started to flock in. Correct. And it became a community. Correct. And that is where I started to meet a lot of people. Then I got a call from the ruler's office. You know, Mr. Faisal, uh, the Sheikh Sultan's uh, you know, PA is calling. Uh, Highness heard about uh, the community center, you know, which you are allowing everybody to use it. And he wants to come and visit that place. And that is how in 2008 the Sharjah ruler came to my factory. And he came for 10 minutes. He spent four and a half hours in the factory because he was fascinated with the social side to the business. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell all of you here is, you know, if you genuinely do things for your people, you will grow. You know, it's all about giving. You know, you give more, you get more. Yeah. And this has been my life. And that is where the, all the exits happen. Then Sheikh Mohammed came, they loved it. There was a news article on Alba newspaper, Arabic newspaper. Then also, you know, I said, money is not everything for me. Correct. Then we, we did the deed because they wanted to be a homegrown story. Uh, I gave 45% for a $300 million valuation at that time. They paid cash to me. And when they went into difficulty in 2008 crisis, in 2011, the CEO called me and said, you know, can you buy back our stake for a discount? I said, no. You know, I will help you to sell it for a profit. And that is how I went to New York. To, Tyco was my biggest customer. And I offered it at a 25% premium, their 45% stake. And that is how they got $58 million profit. You know, and that's a respect I have from the ruling families. Because I could have bought it back at a discount, but I did not do that. And I made sure that my investor got the returns much more than what he invested in. And this went from a line, from one business to the business. Correct? So to answer your question, I never thought of exiting. Destiny is such. And, but I was never in love with the physical things. You know, I said, you know, what is important for me is my health and my happiness and my family and, and my people. So, you should not have too much attachments. Yeah. The, why are you attached? You know, because we have no surety tomorrow if we are waking up. Okay? So, if you remove this attachment, you know, in your businesses and think of happiness. Okay? And, and, Bringing happiness to others. And unless and until you bring happiness to yourself, you cannot radiate happiness to others. Uh, and that is, that's what I love every day of my life. Right? I mean, you, Anisha, call, I come if I can, because I love to meet people. 
And I used to tell Ajit, I want to meet my charter members. I never met the majority of them. So how can we do that? You know, and today I'm getting an opportunity. See, it's all divine. You know, we have to put our effort and, and God will make it happen. As this belief, I am Dilip Narayan from Organic BPS and in your speech you mentioned that there are two important things, purpose and profit for a business. If we ask you to get into the depth, which drives you, whether purpose drives you or profit drives you, both are important to you. And a supplementary question, uh, which is your first love? whether it is Faisal and Shabana Foundation or your new initiatives today? So for me, always been a purpose. Right? Because if you have a purpose, everything else falls into the picture. That's number one. Second is, but to find that purpose, you should, you should have... A lot of people start business for the sake of starting to make money. And that is where the problem is. Because after some time, every day you wake up and oh my god, I have to go to my office. Correct? If you have a purpose, you will never feel like that. You, know, you have the energy to go uh, and cheerful and be in the office smiling. That's number one. Second is, and that's what if you see my, we call Kemp Wheel. You know, the biggest circle is our foundation. You know, because I believe in purpose. Correct? And today, that's what drives me. And that is why you see every business is different because I see the purpose. When I build a school, and I saw the, the, the excitement of the society, uh, how excited they were with the government school being better than a private school. I said, how come no one in India ever thought of upgrading government schools? Then I realized construction is the biggest challenge. And that is where the idea came in of prefabrication and manufacturing schools and hospitals, correct? So the ideas come from the need, you know? And that need comes when you have a purpose. Correct? So you need to be really go into the minute details because today everybody wants technology. What is technology? Technology is just an enabler. You know, today the basics are the one which we have to meet. Now, I, I'll give you a big, biggest example. What is needed in Kerala is a good quality construction companies. You know, today it's the biggest challenge. You know, I'm training contractors in Calicut now. You know, with 3D panel technology. Now, there's a small group of two engineers called Gravity Constructions. Today, they, they come and meet me and thank me all the time when I come to Calicut. They become so popular in Calicut because I taught them how to do things properly. Correct? So I think the construction is a big opportunity. But construction with technology. Correct? Technology is just an enabler in every aspect of your life. But the basics, India needs basic which is far behind. And this is what I think entrepreneurs should start evaluating it. You know, what is needed for the human life? You go into that business, you will always will have demand. Students, I consider myself with that. Uh, I have a question is like how when you said uh, you started with scrap and then found tea. So how do you validate uh, your idea? Like how you go about it? Uh, it's like uh, if you compare uh, entrepreneurship with swimming, it is like there are so many people standing on the side of the swimming pool with fear of getting drowned. So like that main, main thing is the feasibility of the ideas. Like when you when you take up now, we have a lot of sustainable solutions are there. Like uh, one example is solid waste management. But I, I tried my best to understand it to get an economic way of uh, feasible uh, solution to that. But I could not find. Maybe I'm not I'm to get more deep into it. So, how do you validate the idea? And secondly, like, uh, how, what what is your message to? Is already already partly answered. Message to those who are standing on the side of the swimming pool. If entrepreneurship is there, swimming. The start to the end, whether it's a product or a service, correct? And you need to make sure that every step you are solved going to the next before going to the next step. I'll give you an example. Castings. When I started the casting industry, India was not a big player. China was started to be a big player. The carbon steel casting was the basic castings. 
Right? Every industry needs the basic carbon steel. America was selling at four dollars a kilo. Europe was 4.5 euros a kilo. China was 1.6 dollars a kg, and India was 1.8 dollars a kg. There's the two things: price and quality. So I said, unless and until I make my casting at 1.5 dollars a kg with the German quality, nobody's going to buy. It. Especially, I mean, Ajman, which is an unknown place in the world, correct? So all my feasibility was towards that. And that is where the integration I started. You know, starting from the design, starting from the scrap. Then there was no sand available because I can't get it from India. River sand is not possible. So I found out in Saudi Arabia there are silica mines there, but they never made sand for the foundry industry. So I need to get somebody, some knowledgeable person, to go to Saudi to convince the guys there, Advanced Chemicals, to make foundry grade sand silica for me. Correct. So I did that. So I got the scrap, I got the sand, you know, I got other materials. So you need to go in step by step and make sure that you have the raw materials and people in your hand. Correct. And this is a tedious process. So for that, I tell people, you need to have a lot of energy, correct? And that is come from their self-discipline. Last 30 years, I wake up at 4.45 in the morning, wherever I am in the world, correct? So all my thinking is in that morning, two to three hours. Four to six is the sattvic time. You know, that is where you absorb the maximum. The human intellect works the highest in that four to six a.m. Okay. And whatever you read, it, read at the time, that's what if you are young, my mother used to say, Mone, and that time we never understood why you know, she is saying that Rahul and Nichi Padikyan. The reason is that is a sattvic time. Correct? So you need to put that extra effort to do the feasibility. You know, I'm sure Rajesh is there as an ENY country head here. But today, their job of a consultant is validation of your ideas. But the ideas in the business plan has to be done by the entrepreneur. You know? Then that becomes a robust business plan. Okay? And that is what I have done in my life. You know, I used to go through every minute details and, and, and validate before I go and start any businesses. Yes, a suggestion for you. And the other question is, don't look at who is waiting on the queue, just go ahead. <laughs> yes, no. uh, this is a suggestion to you as head of CII. Faisal, uh, two, I think it was two days back, Jimon and the rest of us spent around two hours deciding on what to talk to the chief secretary who is going to meet on the fourth. I would say you change your plans. Get all the IAS officers together and get him to address them. <laughs> Thank you. And the next session, get the ministers also. Sure. That will work. Nation for health and wellness, holistic health and wellness. And this is really something that can inspire. And uh, hopefully we will... Yeah, once, the, once the resort is up and running in the first quarter, and my idea was I have a huge um, uh, the conference space I built for this particular reason. Because we need to bring thought leaders for conferences there, one day conferences, because we need to de-stress these people when they come into the place. Okay. I mean, I'll invite all of you because now the work is going on. Uh, I think your idea is great. As I said, we need to bring all these people together, you know, in an amazing place, you know, whether it's mine or CGH or wherever it is. You know, and we need multiple interactions with these people to change. Don't expect them to change overnight, you know, because it's deep-rooted uh, culture which we are trying to change, you know, but we need to, of course, make a plan. My name is George Dominic. <laughs> I know you will. I have not changed to that. It was uh, the minister from Kerala spent 10 minutes with you and you hit him. The minister, the Sheikh from Sharjah, similarly spent some time and you hit him. Now, look what you've done after spending one hour with that. You hit all of us. <laughs> Thank you.
some little, <coughs> before I ask a question, it was Sam Bitroda who, who famously said, make Ayurveda, the, Kerala the Ayurveda capital of the world. I think your project here is first definite, a big definitive step towards that, that achievement. Wellness capital of the world. Where two things, and of course, uh, I think nature is the ultimate luxury. And you're obviously going towards that, despite the additional costs that we spent uh, as a matter of return on capital. Return from, from nature is phenomenal, which is one lesson which Kerala must learn. My <coughs> Coming to on scalability, sometimes I think that small is beautiful so, and less is more. Two principles which we, we hold by. And I see how these two can, that what, what you are saying, what these, what I said, does not, is not contradictory. No, absolutely. And, uh, so though, though your scale is high, so the, the big <coughs> difference excellence can make is, is not small or big, but, but being irrepla irreplaceable as far as that product, your, your, your service is concerned. Of course, you shifted from many businesses, from, from, from your casting to building schools, and now, of course, into the ultimate wellness uh, product, which you, which will possibly put Kerala on a, on the global map. So, uh, and, and, and one statement I, I heard you say is, "Let's all do it together." Collaboration is the new is a new uh, uh, success. Instead of, I mean, of course, competition is part of it. But collaboration makes big rewards. And I'm, I'm most fascinated by it. After having been hit, broke, you been broke, they broke your shoulder, and uh, others go, go, to, go to Telangana. But you decided to be in <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Damani. No, no, you're absolutely right, you know, because for me, all what I do since 2012 is to give back inspire uh, and, and, and in Kerala especially what we need is small enterprises, small enterprises, especially in Ayurveda products, you know, I'm, I just had a meeting today morning with my Ayurveda team. I said, how do we support to develop products backward integration? And that is a big industry for Kerala. Because today you don't see quality, you know, packaging. The products may be good inside. But if you really see the packaging when you compare to ESOP and all this, you know, the players in the world, why can't we achieve that? So, so all these things with the Thai, CII coming together, you know, uh, with ENY and all of them, we need to really figure out a, a, a basic plan for the entrepreneurs to take it forward. And I think this is all possible in this industry, you know, because it's a huge industry, wellness industry. We are talking about $4.5 trillion dollars is what I hear, you know, the market uh, for this wellness in India and Kerala should be the place to be. So, uh, uh, thank you and, and I'm really looking forward to have you at our place, you know, uh, by end of the year. Because he is the guru, you know, sitting over here without any doubt. You know, and, I, and I'm not trying to flatter because I know you, of you, not personally, but I've been following what you're doing and I hear from so many people from around the world, you know, all good things. And this is where uh, people like me, people like uh, Dominic, all come together, people like yourself, and see how do we create this ecosystem in a collaborative manner, you know. And we all live happily here. Who wants to live in Gulf and who wants to live in America? We don't have a choice, that's why people go there. You know, the people have a choice, they'll come back here. Because family is everything. Correct. For me, three and a half years, always people ask me, which is your, the lead phase of your life and your career? I said, my life in America. Yeah. I'm happy I'm back home. <laughs> <laughs> ten, ten minutes with the minister, ten minutes with the sheikh, and an hour 
had 15 minutes with us and the biggest takeaway is JD changing his views. <laughs> it's been extremely difficult to, for us to get that done and you did it in one hour. So that is a big achievement. Um, with that, I think uh, probably we will wrap this session now. What I can say is, you know, this has been an amazing interaction. And, um, you know, Faisal, we should have interacted with you more often before. But never too late, uh, you know, it's better late than never. And I'm sure that this is just the beginning of a lot of other interactions in the future. One takeaway is that, you know, you, how you started off as an entrepreneur and how you are today actually a game changer. And that is a testimony of the journey that you have undertaken with a very clear vision in everything that you do to be the best and never to be caught down by the circumstances but but engage with the, with the surroundings and create the ecosystems that facilitate that growth. That's a beautiful way you have done it in all the businesses that you have ventured into. So there are so many takeaways for us and it's been an honor to have you here uh, today with us. Thank you for joining. Um, you know, I guess tomorrow we are opening the, the foundation thing again. Uh, probably India's best uh, civil service academy in Peridil Manna. Uh, for 100 students, it's all free. I just, uh, on the way, I, I, I stopped it to see because uh, it's a very you know, interesting story. So one MLA called Najib Kandapura, you know, he was pestering me for 10 minutes of appointment. Generally, I avoid meeting politicians, you know. I met Pradeep Kumar, amazing human being from the Nakao School. So this guy was continuously sending me WhatsApp. Then he said, 10 minutes, Mr. Faisal. So I said, come to Tula. So it came exactly 68 days before. No, 75 days before. He said, what do you want? He said, he came with 10 projects. And he said, brother, I need your help. He said, you know, for money? He said, yeah, I've got you, I said, you know, I've got ideas. I said, so he said, tell me, these 10 projects, I asked him, Najib, uh, how many years you have as an MLA? He said, four years. So four years, 10 projects, I said you calculate 52 weeks into 4, 200 weeks minus 30 percent. So you have around 130 weeks and you wanted to do 10 projects. So I asked him, tell me your lifestyle. He said, uh, what time you wake up and what time you go to sleep? He said, Faisal ka suji kutha and samyamila. You know, that means I don't have a time even to uh, nail a, uh, to hammer a nail. My tight pack schedule, I sleep at 12. 1 o'clock, I wake up at 7, run again, run again. He says, I'm sorry, I don't spend my, waste my time with people like you, who does not have time. So, I'm, thank you very much. He was shocked. He says, it's like a blow on his face. Please, 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 what should I do? So, I said, first thing I'll tell you, you are very energetic, enterprising, great 10 initiatives. Wake up at 5 in the morning and sleep latest by 11 o'clock being an MLA, otherwise 10 o'clock I told him. And if you show to me one month, this you can do, then you come back and we discuss what to do. You will not believe it. I, I quote him in many places now. Next day onwards, every day 5 o'clock is the name of Sabelia Narakun photo. <laughs> Video. Every day. He was really a shock to me. I don't know him in the past. Every day he updates me at 5 o'clock. So, one month later, I said, Joseph, my foundation director, you know, go and do a background check on this guy. You know, he amazes me. So he goes to Pernal Manna, you know, goes and talks to a few people. He said, it's very energetic, it's very secular. You know, he is, you know, he won by 38 votes. You know, it was... Uh, Everybody thought he will never become an MLA and then he wants to do certain things. And I called him and said, come, out of 10, Najib will take one project. So he said, what is that project? I said, we have lack of leaders in bureaucracy. Correct? Because I don't want to touch the politicians and it is dangerous. I said, we need to develop leaders among bureaucrats. And if you look at Kerala generally, the percentage is very low. And you will see, Bihar and UP and the North is the highest. 
and especially northern Kerala, you know, is very less. Today, I took up the project with him. Uh, in 62 days, tomorrow is the opening at 10 o'clock. You know, it is the first campus for developing leaders in the civil services. Everything is with hostels, both men and women. You know, it's uh, it's an institution inside a campus somebody donated. You know, everything happened so quick. I called Najib to Dubai, called a few entrepreneurs. You know, I said, listen, this is what we need. We need models. We raised in one meeting three and a half crore rupees. And what I saw today was a magic. 50,000 square foot was built in 62 days. In 62 days. I think Thai, when it's ready next month and fully, you should have to take your few people to address this 100 students. There are 5,000 applications. And there's an academic, so I went to IIM Calicut. So whatever I do on philanthropy, my advising is from Engineering Institute of Management Calicut. Okay, Priya and I, so we did a board of governance structure. I mean, we spoke to Shashi Tharoor and all of the people. Because we want an inclusive board. You know, it's not that people only paid money can come into the board. I said, we need intellectuals to come under the board. I'm so happy today when I went and saw what has happened there. And today, tomorrow morning, early morning, I'm driving to Peradalmana to along with a lot of politicians are there. You know, I think thousands of people made a big pandal and all that. Because politician Mahaji, you know, he wants to use, which is okay. Provided the core fundamentals of what we are doing there is kept alive. That's what I told him. Now you can take all the credit, you know, we have no problem, but don't overdo it. You know, you need to understand the purpose. Unless and until 25 to 30 percent of the students become IAS officers and other officers, you know, our job is not done. So it is just a start today. So I just wanted to, you know, inform all of you uh, and need all of your blessings and support and it's, uh, it's free for everybody. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Faisal. Uh, thank you, Jimon. I'm open to hand over a token of appreciation to Jimon Kora. I mean, his credentials really surprised me. I mean, big hand uh, to Jimon. <laughs> now, can I uh, request Anisha and Jimon to hand over a token of appreciation to Faisal?